Hi, and welcome to this video about backgammon match play. I'm going to talk about the free drop, which is a situation that can occur post Crawford. One of the players need one point to win the match, and the other player needs an even number of points. We call the player ahead for the leader, and the player behind for the trailer. As an example, we can take a five point match. Let's say that the score is 4 1 and the trailer just won the Crawford game, getting him his only point. If the trailer decides to double in the upcoming game, we would have a free drop situation. First, we take a look at some intuitive arguments for handling this situation, and afterwards, we look at some numbers to figure out exactly what is going on. I have talked to quite a few good players about this concept, and rather surprisingly, none of them had a reasonable understanding of it. I'm sure that the best players understand this really well, and I felt that my own understanding of this were a little bit too vague, so I decided to do this study. Let's go ahead. The right direction. First, we take a look at the simplest situation where the free drop is possible. This is a case where the leader needs one point to win, and the trailer needs two. We write this situation as need one, need two. If trailer doubles in this situation and we take, we play the current game for the whole match. If we pass, we are forced to play the next game for the match. This means that we can take the double if we think we have more than 50% winning chances and drop it otherwise. Now, let's take a look at need 1, need 4. We expect trailer to double extremely early all the remaining games in the match because he can only gain by doing so. It really doesn't matter how big he loses, so it's irrelevant if he loses 1 point or 8, the match was lost anyway. Let's consider how many games there are remaining in the match. If we take the double, there are 2 games left, but if we pass, there are also 2 games left. In both cases, we disregard that he can win a gammon, because the whole match will be lost anyway if he wins 4 points in any game. This suggests that it's free to drop the double at this match score if you have less than 50% winning chances, but unfortunately this is wrong. If we take and lose, we didn't risk the whole match, meaning that we intuitively risk less to gain the same, resulting in the possibility to take with less than 50% winning chances. The big hidden factor here is how many gammons we lose. Let's say we lose gammon in every game, then we did actually put the whole match on the line, risking even more than we did at need 1, need 2. If we never lose gammon, we risk way less than at need 1, need 2. The intuitive argument stops here. We simply have to do the math to get some qualified answers. I don't want to get too much into details about how to calculate take points. I just want to point out which tools I've used. First, we have the standard take point formula, where the take point is calculated as our risk in match equity divided by the sum of our risk and our gain. We use this number to tell us at which point we should rather take than pass. There are many different match equity tables, and I decided to use the Rockwell Casares match equity table for my calculations. The parameters needed for the take point table is our win percentage and our gammon loss percentage. We also need our single game loss percentage, but it can be calculated by subtracting our win percentage and our gammon loss percentage from 100. I've made a small omission in my calculations. I have not accounted for backgammon losses, but they are typically less than 1% backgammon in a position, and it's not a real factor in the development of the rules I'm going to state later. I've made a spreadsheet that calculates the take point at need 1, need 4, given my win percentage and my gammon loss percentage. In the leftmost column, we have the leader's win percentage, and in the upper row, we have the leader's gammon loss percentage. The dark green cell marks the take point, and the lighter green cell indicates the closest neighbor to our take point. In the starting position, we win and lose about 15% gammon. Looking at the table, our take point is at 51%. Based on that, it's actually a really good rule of thumb to take if you're ahead and drop if you're behind. Of course, this only applies to the positions close to the starting position. Let's say we get into a position where we only lose 10% gammon. 
Now the table tells us that we can actually take with only 46% chance to win. It's rather clear that there's a system. When we lose 5% less gammon, we can take with 5% less winning chance. In praxis, it's very hard to estimate win and gammon percentages. This is why I formulate the rule as Your take point is at 50% winning chances, at 15% gammon loss. 5% gammons is worth 5% games. A quick look at need 1 need 6 makes us believe that the rule for this match score is Your take point is at 50% winning chances, at 15% gammon loss. 5% gammons is worth 3% games. And doing the same for need 1 need 8, we have the last rule. Your take point is at 50% winning chances, at 15% gammon loss. 5% gammons is worth 4% gains. These rules of thumb will guide you good enough to handle free drop situations as good as most top players. Let me give you two examples of use of the rules. In this first example we have a pure race with no contact. White is on roll and leading with two pips. There's no doubt that he is a clear favorite to win the game. With 0% gammon loss at need 1, need 4, we estimate that our take point is around 35%. At our starting point, the take point were at 50% when losing 15% gammon. Now we are losing 15% less gammons, making the take point go down another 15%. We have 38% winning chances according to the program called Extreme Gammon. And this should be an easy take, which is also confirmed by the program. In the second example, we ended up in a holding game situation. This time, white has achieved a little bit more than black. White only wins about 10% gammons, meaning that black can take if he has about 45% winning chances, which he certainly has. This time it's harder to estimate correctly, but still the rule guide us in the right direction. That's it for now. I hope you have enjoyed this video and you're welcome to post comments below. Until next time, have fun.